Hi there, welcome to another edition of Bustinet. We're back with West Brom. They're going to have um, their last match of preseason against uh, Chelsea in the Community Shield. But I thought that this would be a fantastic time to look at my squad and um, identify people who are, you know, well past their prime, as well as my strategy going forward. Here we can see Gerard Moreno. He's one of he was one of the um, choice um, choice strikers for my team. He's been with us since 2015. When he first joined our club, you know, at first I, I didn't know where to slot him. Came in for 2.8 million, but he started banging in the goals. By the time Perkovic showed up in 2021, 20, 2022, his goals started drying up. So you know, I've decided, well, you know, I think it's time for Moreno to go. He's 32 years old. If I can get anything for him, it'll be good. A uh, good piece of transfer business. Another fantastic player that we owe a lot to is Jason Muyo who's also been a stalwart in our sides, never failed to get anything above 7 for his ratings. We bought him for 10 million and he's been like, he's been a godsend. But he's getting old and at 32, I want to try and re recover some of the uh, outlay I did on him. So the strategy will be to sell off Murillo, uh, Moreno, um, as well as one or two fringe players who I have no faith in. We have this player called Agim Amatage. Now, if you look at his stats, they look like, you know, if you just looked at technical stats, he's look, he looks brilliant for a 21-year-old boy. You know, corner 16, crossing 17, dribbling 13, finishing 16, composure 15. Who doesn't want him? I definitely thought he had potential. Only thing I was hoping would see an improvement was natural fitness. That never improved. And he's really a short... I mean, I'm we know short is short, but three for sh height, I mean... That guy is, this guy is 1.58 centimeters tall. He is so short. He runs past people's armpits all the time. And, you know, the, he doesn't really have much of a future in my team. So, and while he was with us, um, we decided to send him on loan to Verona, where he scored three goals, which wasn't bad, you know, but he only made seven appearances on a season-long loan. Even at West Brom, I kept him for the three seasons before he turned uh, 20. And uh, he only had, like, he had a look in some games, but never convinced me that he was anything near decent. So we're going to do... So what we've done is, so we've done... A, we've basically set him up to be sold off to clubs. And the value will be 6.5 million, but with a percentage of profit from the next sale of 40%. I want to sell him off to clubs in my league so that we improve the standard of football in um, England. At the moment, too many of my players are going overseas. And if I you look at the history of transfers... We've had some fantastic players who have come to the club and have gone off ha and have left. So I just pick a few to see where they have ended up. I'll give you one example. In 2016, which was 2015, we did sell a few players. Uh, most notably, this guy, Saido Berahino. Now, even in today's game, he's like a wonder kid. He's got like four or five stars. The moment we see him, we think like, wow, this guy's going to be good. But since the time I sold him, he hasn't really improved. His stats have been almost the same. And if you look at his history, he banged in all the goals. You know, 36 appearances, 22 goals that season. And straight away, he put in a transfer request. I was so pissed off. I just took the 24 million from Man City. But look at what happened at Man City. While he's at Man City, he made 14 appearances, 12 appearances, and Sony scored one goal. Abysmal performance in Man City. Then he leaves Man City, goes to Aston Villa on loan, bangs in 10 goals. And then they purchase him outright from uh, Man City for 11.75 million, which was, you know, to be fair, a bargain. Now, if we look at another player in 2016, something I see a pattern emerging. Here we have Leo Baptista. Now, when he joined West Brom, I had so I had high hopes of this guy. You know, he had four stars, and I was thinking, okay, good. You know, here I have a player who has potential, who can potentially play in that four-three-one-two AMC slot, and he's gonna rule because he had the right attributes. But again, the attributes haven't really improved. Very strange this game. So. Looking at his history, he joined us for 7.75, banged in 18 goals. I sold him for 43 million. Man City came along again, knocking on the door. They didn't learn from Berahino. They bought this guy up and he says on the 
He says here Man City doesn't play a single game for three seasons. Must have been due to the fact that we hammered Man City to the title. They must have been pissed. Sold, they sold him off to Norwich for 2.8 million. He goes and scores 17 goals for Norwich. And then goes to join Newcastle and, well, he's maybe the twilight of his years and he's not really performing. It's really sad because I had such high hopes for Leo Baptista. In 2017, our biggest success story was this guy, Rodrigo Aguayo. Or however you want to pronounce his name, I don't know. So he joined us for 4.3 million. Scored 10 goals. My goal was very simple. I wanted to have a kitty of about 100 million. That was my target. So I kept developing players in my 4312 and selling them off, you know, buy for 4.3 and sell for 32 million. He scored banged in 10 goals. And then uh, the following season, he scored six goals. And the next season, he scores eight goals. But his ratings were really high. Along the way comes Bayern Munich, willing to pay 32.5 million for him. Goes to a top side, makes three appearances. Eight appearances, one appearance. It's like almost a sin if you sell him to any of the top clubs. Any good player that you're developing should never go to a top club. He goes to Frankfurt and then helps Frankfurt out with a return of 10, almost what, 40 goals in three seasons. You know, ratings are uh, so much better now. Moral story, slowly emerging here. 2018, here we are. We decide to sell off this uh, Rafael Toloi. I still remember this boy. He was supposed to be a really good central defender. I was so impressed with him in the start of the season. I said, okay, cool. You know, this is the one. And then he does something really stupid. Demands a transfer. And I was a bit pissed off. Bought him for six million. So I thought, I'll flog you off for 22. So I sold him to Napoli for 22 million. And then he goes to Napoli. And the same shit happens. You know, he, he may have played 17 games on Napoli. I don't know what happened. He gets six games the next season. Two games the following season. Goes to the bench. And then plays five fake games the next season. And then ends up in Carpi and plays 38, 38 matches. Again... Moral story again, it's, this is uh, beginning to look like a very disturbing pattern. 2019, yeah, this is one of my classic, this is one of the best stories I had. Christian De Vloot bought him in when he was a young kid, again another 17 year old. Had, it was, I think he had 3 or 4 stars at that time. Brilliant potential. So I was... My mind was already set. I was going to keep him, put him on loan and see whether or not he I could flog him off again. Bought him at 5.75 million. He then immediately I put him out on loan to Sunderland. 30 matches, he scores 9 goals. I was like, okay, you're not bad. Brought him back, gave him a run of 16 games. Scored 5 goals. The following season, he never got a chance to play in the senior team. He just sat on the bench. And then I decided, okay, let's go sell. See if we can sell a player who has not played a single game the whole season. And there we go, 31.5 million for Tristian De Vloot. But then he goes at, goes out to Tottenham Hotspur, 13, 7, 6 and 1. And decreasing appearances and his goal return, definitely an, an embarrassment. Nor, the Spurs then go and sell him off, flog him off, uh, sell him off at a discount to Everton for 7.25 million, who make the sharp move of selling him for 8.5 million to Norwich. Again, you know, he seems to do better with teams that are struggling and now we go to the 2020 season when Darren Fletcher was sold off that was a sad day for me at the club because he's such a loyal servant and here we have Diego Rubio Atletico Madrid now this boy was brought in early in his um, I brought him very early I had targeted him you know so I wanted him from sporting Lisbon's B side because I had expectations that he was going to bang in the goals he did exactly that you know his goal return was fairly decent for a, a supporting striker. Bought him for a remarkable four hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and sold him off for fifteen k to Atletico Madrid, who, in all fairness, did a pretty good job of not using him <laughs> the whole season and turning around and selling him at a fantastic discount to Celta, who played him like you know who played him the whole season. It's like it's ridiculous what top clubs are doing to the best players in the game and here we have the my f Simon Goddard one of my best sales as well 
Goddard came in as a youngster from um, Derby. Well, he was actually in Manchester United. He went off to loan on loan to Derby. And I decided I'm going to take a chance with this guy. So I bought him for 20 million, knowing that if I develop this England under 21, I have a chance of selling him off as well. So he comes in, makes seven appearances, scores five goals. And I'm like, wow, nice. Goes the next season, five goals from 13 appearances. Not bad, 7.2. And that's when I decided to put him on the market. And guess who comes and knocks on the door? Without fail, Man City are always going to buy my players for 50 over a million. They come in, they pay 58 million. Thank you, Man City. But they don't use him. And he gets sold off to Sheffield United. The Blades, happy as can be. Uh, another player that I sold off, another youngster, Vince Moreno. Sold him off really young. His stats are brilliant. You know, he had a... I couldn't fit him into my... Um, I, I could fit him into my system, but I had too many strikers, and uh, my goal was very simple. Use the strikers, develop them, get, in, get them scoring some goals, and get some interest going. I put him on loan for Sevilla the whole season. He scored 16 goals. Thank you, Sevilla, for inflating his value for me. Wolves will come along and pay $55 million for him. Oh, that was a brilliant piece of business. Wins Moreno, $55 million from $2.9 million. And this pattern that exists in the game keeps keeps repeating itself over and over again with some of the top players I have. If they go to Man City, just you know, they just fail. Sergey Roberto, everybody's favorite in football manager, you know, he was okay for me. Played many seasons for us. You know, a starward at seven. I sold him. Decided this guy, I'm not going to sell him to one of the big guns. I sold him to Sampdoria, and he's done well at Sampdoria. He's played 34, made 34 appearances. So the moral of the story that I finally got into is that this season, any of my prime players who are going to go, they are all going to go to none of the top four. They're not going to go to any Real Madrid's. They're not going to go to any foreign overseas clubs. I'm going to improve the standard of football in my league by selling them to clubs that are not in the top tier. How do you make money from this game? You have to follow some pretty simple strategies and a lot of FMers do this. The first thing you have to bear in mind is you your reputation as a club has to improve. If you're at the lower tiers of um, the table, it's going to be hard. You can sell players, you can make some money, but if you're talking about 50 to 100 million, probably not. You have to start slow. You know, if you're in the premiership, uh, you think at 20 to, 35, 20 to 30 million, that's easy. That's easy to do. My strategy was very simple. I scouted Portugal early, Serbia, Slovenia. You want to scout the countries that are not the Germanys, not the Fra not the Frances, not the top tier. You might be able to find some players there, but you're going to end up paying like 7 to 10 million pounds for your players. If you're scouting countries like Portugal, you could find players for half a million. Yeah, you go to Serbia, you probably find players for one or two million. So you want to be picking all these players up, you know. And then the second step is going to be getting the right system together. Your players need to have high average ratings for them to become a viable transfer target. So have a tactic that allows you to um, have goal scoring potential. When I used my 4-1-2-2-1 and my 4-3-1-2, that's when everything started exploding for me. When I started with a two, three-man strike force, my strikers, I had so many strikers on, in my stable. At one point, I had something like seven strikers in West Brom. And I kept training them, giving them a run of a few games. And if I couldn't play them in my team, I put them in another league where they, they would get a really good chance of uh, playing in the first team and scoring goals like playing in Sevilla and they scored goals and their average ratings were good and the next thing you know somebody's gonna come knocking at your door to sell and this is when your third part comes in. Clubs like Man City, Bayern Munich, they're always gonna pay 40 to 50 million pounds of players so yeah those are very good clubs to sell them to for some strange reason in this game and as I have yet to fix it clubs like Man City have a terrible almost abysmal transfer strategy you're always going to find Man City willing to subsidize you to the tune of 50 million every season and not play the player well there is a it's good if you're going to make money quick but in the long run for your league it's not very good because uh 
the standard of football in your league is not going to improve and you're going to end up in a situation like I've ended up in which is you're going to go on these incredible unbeaten streaks where other clubs are just not as good as you so this season I've decided you know to do things different I'm going to sell my players to the Stokes the the Norwiches the Sheffield Uniteds the Southamptons I'm going to sell them to all those clubs banging on the door trying to break into the top 10 of the league so that's one thing that you might want to try to make money in this game it's not hard it's quite easy scout well have a strategy identify your players have the right tactic that allows you to develop players and also get them high average ratings remember the key here is those average ratings they need to be decent at least uh, 7.2 to 7.3 and clubs will take notice Chelsea and West Brom we have been using um, a few of the tactics this season I'm going to continue to use the 4-4-2 diamond for this match um, I'm a bit concerned um, whether or not to play Nathan in this game because uh, he has not had any kind of a preseason. but I'll probably start him for like a few minutes 10-15 minutes 20 at max and then I'll take him off uh, in defense I'm going to give this simply when Bangamore a chance to play Mixi Raka as well um, he'll come on in place of Marino we'll give Marino a start let's see how this match progresses they are probably yes they have a rather attacking foot left and right I'm gonna make sure that okay everything is sorted I'm gonna play a bit narrower and off we go Oh, nice here from Kutua. I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to Pinyara. I want to see, I want to check his movement out. I want to make sure that he doesn't stray too far away from the defensive line. Keely has a chance to play Perkovic in early. Perkovic has a lot of work to do. Good pressure from our front three. Pinola reads that really well. Nathan turns can't oh yeah, it's definitely uh, lacking in match fit sharpness at the moment. Bukovic as well. Any other time, any other place in he would have scored you know, at least a full season. Nathan is not 87. I was right. His condition, I will have to monitor very carefully. Because he's a first choice player and I do not want him to go down. Because we really lost Gauchino, Nathan is an important part of how we play. Moyo has already picked up a yellow card. I want to watch the uh, action, zo action zones. Make sure that we have some measure of control of this game. Pinola doing well to cover the space that was vacated by Marino when he went to take the uh, throw in. Oh, he's a mile away. He's... Pinada may not be the right choice because his pace is only 12. So I need to put somebody else in here who's actually a lot faster than him. Okay, Nathan is at 79. Pinata is at 80. The two of them are getting tired. Keely does oh so sweet. Try and score. The boys have taken the lead against Chelsea. I am gonna change things around. 
Pineda will be taken off, um, Nathan will be taken off, these two players will be taken off. I want to bring in a, another player and see how he does, maybe someone who is slightly faster than him. Okay, so it's time to make a substitution. Uh, Salas. I think Salas is a bit faster than Piñata. Hadro will come on for Nathan. Piñata has a Pinola has a pace of about 12, so he's always going to be chasing after players. boys aren't playing that badly. Slight tweaks will be needed to the system. Maybe you can see Pinara, he's just sliding in on challenges. Not, not a good thing at all. Not for his position. We'll see if uh, Salas does a better job in that position soon. So Salas is now come on. He'll take over that slot. Another option for me is, of course, Lucas Romero, the captain. Oh, we got a penalty inside the box. Pretty, I'm pretty happy with the system. There is in the 442 white diamond, the most important position is going to be that DM position. As you can see, he does a lot of running, he covers a lot of ground, and he has to be extremely fit. He has to have the pace, the anticipation. He really has to be the complete defensive midfielder. Pineda, he is only. He's only got 12 for pace, so if the ball breaks, especially in an attacking system, he's going to have a lot of running, a lot of ground to cover. So you need, as well, defenders that are very good at anticipating dangers. Murillo is a very exp experienced def central defender, and he is putting on a good performance, but he's already picked up a yellow card, and that's, that isn't a, something that I'm very happy with. So now let's look at Salas. The difference between Salas and Pineda is, to me, I, I know the differences between the two players and I'm pretty confident Salas will do a much better job in that position than Murillo, um, sorry, Pineda did. The defenders showing a lot of composure in the box to get the ball back and not overcommit. That's the thing about playing um, with stay on feet. Nice pass from. Oh, that should have been our third goal. Very good work. A team that's never used a 4 4 2 time, and they have in preseason, but you know, you need like a few. In FM, you need a few games. You need to fit the team around the system. You need to ensure that uh, your, your players get used to the system. There is going to be some bidding down to any kind of a system, but I'm already very happy with our 4 4 2 point diamond. <laughs> Granted, we have uh, all three goals came off set pieces.
from open play, we have created a few chances too. Perkovic most notably missing uh, one or two chances early in the game. I love Salas. So different as a as a uh, DM than um, Pinata. He dictates tempo. You know he knows how to play the killer ball. Oh, what can I say? Four 0 Chelsea. Oh no, it's offside. You poor thing. I was gonna be like, hoo hoo. I love beating Chelsea by like big margins. 8.3 from Keeley, 9.0 from Berkovic, and my DM Pinada had 6.8. Alejandro Salas is at 6.8. Both about the same. You, you can't really expect your your DM to f in this game to get like eights. I don't think so. Salas, look at him. Whew, I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, nicely. Berkovic, does he want to score? He desperately wants to make it too. Last, uh, two seasons ago, Nathan beat Berkovic by about two goals to the Ballon d'Or. They, they had a hit-to-hit -hit fight all the way. In third place was Neymar. The year before that, um, Berkovic beat Nathan. So, <laughs> Ballon d'Or competition is just between Nathan and Berkovic in our team. We have like dominated Balloon Dior the last few seasons in Europe. Garbett. Oh, love him. Oh, not going to be selling him out of the... F Garbett. Uh, oh, 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 my goodness. That would have been such a goal. Garbett came to our club. It was an accident. Um, I was like, I needed a fullback to get on the left hand slot so I was desperately looking for fullbacks and then this agent comes to us and offers me a, well Berkovic now scores his second uh, this agent comes to us and he offers me this player Luke Garbett so you know normally I don't even bother looking at agents I'm like yeah get a, get the hell out of my face you know don't waste my time and then suddenly I look at his attributes and I'm like wow this this agent is coming in he's coming to me with Luke Garbett and I'm like he's got decent stats and I was Right, let's try him out. He plays the first game, the second game, the third game, and then after that, I'm like, I got him on the cheap. I think it was like, we had to pay something like, uh, we had to pay a very nominal fee just to get Luke Albert into the side. So he was one of the best moves I ever did with West Bromwich Albin, and it wasn't because of some intelligent scouting on my behest. It was uh, because of an agent who showed up at my door with the right offer. Will Perkovic take this penalty? He wants to. He wants to get his hat-trick. He wants to start the season with a hat-trick. This is going to be his Balloon Dior year. Jürgen Forsberg has been sent off. The 442 Diamond is raped. Oh, excuse the language. The 442 Diamond has completely destroyed and dismantled Chelsea in the Community Shield. The difference? A change made to my DM was pivotal in this match. The, the, just that one player between Pinada and Salas. There's a lot of time to be wasted here. Borkovic, can he get his hat-trick? Can he start off this new season in style? Here we go. Borkovic, for his hat-trick. He does it. Ah, Borkovic, Borkovic, Borkovic. I hope he doesn't end up in the pub again because he has this habit of, uh, you know, ending up in the pub season 2023 the year he won his balloon d'or he had to he had to be disciplined five times because he missed five games or oh, no he missed three games one quarter final champions league match two league games and three training sessions because he was too wasted salas this this is what i want to see from my dm i don't want them to tackle i just want them to cover it, if you have when you force a team to play around your players, it's a lot better than to see your players, you know, trying to tackle. Because, okay, if they tackle, that's great. They win the ball. But what if they tackle and they miss? Which was exactly what, what Pinata was doing earlier. Pinata was sliding in, you know, and 
making tackles. That was, you know, he's got 19 for tackling, so he wanted to try and tackle everything. Sometimes, you know, you want a player to stay on feet a lot more than you want him to tackle. Good real life example would be the Serbia and Brazil under 21 World Cup final. Serbia stayed on feet for most of the game. And we have done it. Chelsea beaten 5 0, fourth courtesy of our 4 4 2 diamond. Very good start to the season. I'm very happy with the result and the way my team played. And we are all set for the start of a new season. The 4 4 2 diamond had four half chances, six clear cut chances. That's a total of 10 chances. Out of 18 shots on goal, slamming the woodwork three times. Do you want your tactic to do anything more than that? Chelsea had only one clear cut chance, surprisingly. Two half chances. I like the system, but I'm not going to use the system. Well, that brings an end to our preseason show. I hope you've enjoyed how I've covered the preseason and you found it helpful. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. And um, if you have any suggestions, uh, please uh, drop me a note at addictedtofm.com or on Twitter at BusterNet. Thanks for joining me. Please like the show and subscribe. It helps you know, keep me going. I'll catch you guys again soon. Bye.